Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat and this is Ketodactyl. So today I have some really exciting news to talk about. Amazon is currently offering nine free Kindle books and the great thing is that they're all in translation. So this runs until World Book Day, which is the 24th. So I'm hoping to get this video up today, which if you watch this video, you will have three days to get any of these nine Kindle books for free. So I looked up online books and four of them were just up my alley. So I got them for free and it is absolutely an amazing thing that Amazon did to promote works in translation. So without further ado, I'm just gonna give you a little rundown of each book. So if you are an American Kindle owner, then you could get any of these for free. And if you are outside of America, but you have a Kindle, you could also buy these, um, I believe, for their full price. So either way, here are some great works in translation um, that you could possibly get. Okay, so first up is Still Waters by Vivica Sten, translated from the Swedish by Marlene Delargy. This takes place in a very hot July on a Swedish island where a corpse is found bloated in a bunch of nets that have washed ashore and as detectives try to find out what happened to the man who was interviewed by police only days earlier in Stockholm, suddenly another body washes up next to a bed and breakfast. The detective teams up with his childhood friend who is now a lawyer and they are trying to solve the mystery as well as come to terms with how their relationship has fallen out of sorts from the idyllic times of their childhood. Please bear with me for the second book. It has a really long title and it has like so many translators. So, it is A River in Darkness, One Man's Escape from North Korea by Masaji Ishikawa, translated from the Japanese by Risa Kobayashi and Martin Brown. So this is a non-fiction account of Ishikawa's life, and he is half Korean, half Japanese. And he was raised in Japan until he was 13 years old, when his father was lured by communist ideals, and he moved the family to North Korea where the father quickly found himself at the bottom of the caste system in North Korea, and Ishikawa's life radically changed forever. So from being in Japan to North Korea and then back again to Japan when he fled North Korea, um, I think it will be a really, really interesting account of what North Korea is like. I haven't yet read anything um, from North Korea or anyone who has escaped North Korea, so I'm really looking forward to this one. This is one that I immediately bought and I'm going to put it probably on my TBR for next month. So the next book on this list is House by the River by Lena Monta, and it was translated from the Greek by Gail Holst Warhaf. We follow Theodora, who raises her five beautiful daughters in a small village at the base of Mount Olympus. But as time goes on, her daughters move on and get their own lives, and they grow up and they move away, and it's been about 20 years since she's heard from any of her daughters, and she wonders how far she could have drifted from them and what it would take to get them back in each other's lives again. So I think this is a really moving um, family drama set in a very interesting location. So if either of those things sound like they'd be interesting to you, then I would recommend picking it up. So the next one I'd like to talk about is The Great Passage by Shion Mira and it's translated from the Japanese by Julia Winters Carpenter. So we follow Kohei Araki, who has loved the language of words for as long as he can remember, and he works at a company that creates dictionaries. So when he has decided it is his time to retire, he's looking to kind of take on a charge to replace him and to be the next lover of language. And he decides to create his life's work, which he's going to call The Great Passage, a work that includes 2,900 of Japanese language's most beautiful words, and as he is training his young protege, he discovers a lot about life and about love and about friendship. And this is another one that I bought immediately because this was already on my TBR from a long time ago. I can't say that I love dictionaries that much, but I do love language and I do love Japanese, so I think that those two things together are going to make an amazing read. And also the cover is just too cute. I can't help it. It's an ocean of words. So yeah, pick it up if it sounds like something you'd like. <laughs> so the next book on this list is Last Train to Istanbul by Ayaz Kulin, translated from the Turkish by John W. Baker. And in this one, we follow a forbidden romance between a woman who is the last unmarried daughter of a very um, prominent Ottoman Pasha and a Jewish son of the court physician. Um, they're kind of forbidden, but they flee to Paris and get married 
but all is not as it is intended to be because the Nazi occupation happens and things kind of down spiral from there. So if you're looking for a book that deals with the Nazi occupation and also Turkish history and a forbidden romance, then this would be for you. Okay, and next up on the list we have Ten Women by Mac Masella Serrano, translated from the Spanish by Beth Fowler, and this one deals with nine Chilean women and the stories of their life as they are telling their therapist. So this is a snapshot of different women throughout Chilean society of all different levels, all different wealth and socioeconomic classes, um, from people who don't like other humans and prefer the company of their dogs to a maid who just is addicted to TV shows, <laughs> to um, a teenage computer whiz who is trying to deal with her sexuality, to people of the upper echelons of the class system in Chile. So if you like narratives that weave together a few common threads but have an overarching kind of theme of a society in general, I feel like this would be really an interesting read. Okay, so this next book definitely isn't for everyone, but it is definitely straight up my alley of maybe dark and gruesome and haunting. So it is The Grey House by Miriam Petrosin, translated from the Russian by Yuri Machkosov, maybe? So students live in the Grey House, but they are bound to wheelchairs and they have to use prosthetic limbs. They are the physically disabled of society which have been shunted into the house. And they never leave the house and the society that has evolved within the house is all that they know. Um, until the day that outside pressures from deaths that happen in the house um, combine to force reality to become unreal and time to no longer subscribe to clocks and watches. So this sounds like really a surreal, maybe dumb house type um, uh, reimagining? I don't know. I immediately bought it and the cover is also weirdly strange and fantastical, so if that sounds like something you'd be into, then I would love to buddy read it if anyone wants to read it. Um, I can't wait to see how the writing is. In general, I really love Russian fairy tales or the like because they are super dark and that is exactly the kind of thing that I am interested in. So next up on this list is The Question of Red by Laxmi Pumanjak, who, and it's also translated from the Indonesian by the author. So in this one we follow lovers who are caught up in one of the bloodiest communist purges that happened in Indonesia between 1965 and 1968 and it killed over one million people. Um, so if you're looking for a love story that may or may not end well and also deals with um, communist history as well as Indonesian history, then this would definitely be for you. And the last book on this list is The Light of the Fireflies by Paul Penn, translated from the Spanish by Simon Bruni. And this is another one that I'm probably going to give trigger warnings to just because, based on the synopsis, it sounds like it's going to be quite a read. We follow a boy who has lived his whole life underground in the basement of his house with his grandmother, his parents, his sister, and his brother. And before he was born, there was a fire that scarred and burned his family. And he's not sure why they're in the basement or how to get out, but ever since his sister has had the baby, things have been very strange and no one will talk about how she became pregnant or who the father of the baby is. And one day a firefly wanders down into the basement and his grandmother tells him about the mystery and the magic behind fireflies and how they create their own light and how that is so magical and wonderful to be able to experience sunlight and take it with you wherever you go. And from then the boy wants to find a way out of the basement but he can't find it because it's locked and the family is down there together seemingly forever. So it's definitely going to be a dark read and very gritty, but um, that's another one that I picked up immediately. So I hope that some of you will watch this before the time is up and that you could get some of these free titles from Kindle. Um, I think that it's just an amazing thing and I wish I had heard of it sooner so I could have posted this video sooner but um, I, I'm doing it as soon as I can, so hopefully a few of you can get them. Um, and even if you view this after the free time, maybe some of these works in translation would appeal to you and would also be great things to pick up. So I hope you liked this video. Um, if you guys liked it, please give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. It would really mean a lot. And yeah, I'm having quite a good day today. Um, I bought these adorable little barrettes. I don't know if you can see, but they're cats. 
Well, that one's upside down, but yeah. So today's a good day. Cat breaths are always a good day. Um, so I hope you guys have an amazing reading time, and I will chat to you later. Toodles! Bye! <laughs>